Hello, welcome back. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen Linkford and I am a pre-K teacher. We just got back from spring break, so it is Monday and it's been a, a wild one because we've been last minute things getting it together, but nonetheless, we are happy to be back. The kids are happy to be back and they're being very well behaved. In today's video, I am going to show you our daily schedule. I've gotten a lot of comments about what our day looks like, so instead of doing a whole week, I might do that as well, but for today, I'm gonna walk you through our schedule and all the things that we do. Like I said, I'm going to walk you through the schedule. Behind me here, I've showed in some of my weekly vlogs, is our student visual schedule. So it's not very specific for teacher side, but it's kind of follows our routine enough for them to be able to know what's happening and what's coming next. Also, they are on Velcro, so it makes it really, really, really easy for me to switch things up. Like for instance, today, Mondays is early release, so we actually do not nap on Mondays. So I was able to take the nap time off. And as you can see at the back there, we have a missing like picture because I just moved them down. So it's very nice for the kids to be able to manipulate the schedule. I also have a student helper who is in charge of taking the pieces off. And in the beginning of the year, it's really helpful for those kids to know what's coming next. At this point, they're pretty in routine. They know exactly what to expect. All right, so we're gonna start. I'm gonna actually flip the camera over and show you a schedule that I had to type out and turn into my administration because I think that will help you the most and then I'll walk you through it. So it's in this uh, page protector thing because we have to hang it up outside. In the morning, the students are able to arrive from 7.10 to 7.40. So when they come in, they have certain procedures to unpack and then they get to play with morning tubs. After that, we go to breakfast. So the rest of the school gets breakfast on their way in and they eat it in the classroom. But with the pre-K program, we actually go down to the cafeteria and eat breakfast after like everybody else's day has has started in other grades. And then we come back to class around 8, 10, 8, 15, give or take, and we start our morning meeting. After that, we go into learning centers, which is actually three different small groups. So this has changed quite a bit this year, but what is working the best right now is it's me and two paras, and we each have a group for, it's like 20 minutes. So some days it doesn't last as long, but with the transitions and things like that, it, it pretty much equals out to be that. And that's where we get most of our academic learning in, obviously, and I'll explain more of that too. After that, we do go outside, and this is actually my break, so I stay inside, like right now, I'm inside making this video. Then we go into water and snack time. So as soon as they come inside, obviously they're hot, we live in Florida, doesn't matter what time of year. I usually play some songs from Jack Hartman or ABC Mouse for whatever the letter of the week is. So we just play those academic songs while they're eating snack. And then after snack, we come down, and this is our literacy time and our alphabet time. So this is where I fit in my, basically a shared reading lesson. We also do our alphabet time during this, so you know, we'll go through all the letters, we'll talk about our letter of the week, and then we do our alphabet craft. So this is 10 to 10.25, but the actual circle doesn't take that long, and I will be honest, sometimes we go over this time, and it kind of takes away from our social center time or our math time, so this is kind of flexible depending on our activities. Also, these two are very flexible depending on how the day is going, also that our schedule is Velcro. We can flip-flop these if they are getting like, you know, too much academics here and they need to, they need to play, then we might let them play first. If they seem to be okay and they can keep going, then we might do our math circle first. If it's five days a week, then the kids will have a whole group math lesson kind of at the end of the week to wrap it up, but the other four days is basically like small groups again. So the same three teachers, and then we have a computer one as well. So we do some music and movement. So this is why we can flip these sometimes. If we do math right away and then do social centers, it's a good way to clean up the social centers, come to the rug, wait for your friends to clean up while we are singing and dancing and getting some movement out. Then we go to the lunchroom to have our lunch. This is another one of my breaks. I eat lunch, but the paras do stay with the kids to help them during lunchtime. When we come back, it's a phonemic awareness circle time. So I teach phonemic awareness through poetry. So every time I'm sharing my poem of the week, we're doing a phonemic awareness activity with that. So whether it's onset and rhyme, or if we're doing rhyming words or syllables or 
I mean, we're at this point, we're reviewing each skill, so a different skill every day with the poem. And then a lot of the phonemic awareness happens in these learning centers up here as well. So then after that, if it was a normal day, not today, we would go straight into nap time. They sleep for an hour. When we wake up, this has been different. Before we did math at the end of the day, they would wake up and they were just like not in it. So they were really quiet during math circle, but they weren't... They were just still asleep basically. So we decided to switch our social centers. We had a big block of social centers here and I decided to break it up. So we do one rotation and then a second rotation and this is after nap. That way they can wake up a little bit and they can choose what type of social center they want to do. So then after our social centers, we clean up again, come down to the rug and we call them individually to do their pack up and then we have a, like a end of the day reflection sometimes to talk about what we did that day and our goodbye song. I'm kind of out of breath, but let me slow it down a little bit and I'll actually show you some activities for this schedule. Like I said, for the arrival time, they come in and they come in like slowly. They're not all here at one time. They come in like one at a time, two at a time. We do have um, teacher kids that come in a little bit earlier, so they come in at the same time, but they have several steps that they have to do when they get here. So I'm gonna show you some of those things. Okay, so as you can see here, these are their cubbies. So they come over to this area and they unpack. So they take out, their blankets stay here, but they take out their binders and they put them in there. And then they take out their lunch boxes and put them there and their water bottles and then they put their backpack away. Then they come over to sign in we were doing a greeting, but I'm not gonna lie, we're not doing too good with that. So my goal is to bring this into our circle time when we're doing our morning meeting, we can do some greetings. Um, but anyways, then they come in and they do their sign-in, so they find their own name and they write their name. This is differentiated based on the kids, so this kid is able to just look up here and know how to write her name. But then some of our friends are still working on tracing those letters. This is probably due for an upgrade though, because some of these kids are ready to not have to trace. And then they have to walk over here and they use the bathroom. In the beginning of the year, we use this a lot to like check off, make sure everybody went to the bathroom, but now we're in a routine. After they go to the bathroom, then they walk back over here and they get to pick any of these morning tubs to play with at their table. Okay, so as they're playing with those, we are, you know, I can pull kids to do some small group or I'm helping them unpack, things like that. It's not really small group. I would say like one-on-one, -on -one, some testing, and that doesn't happen every day. But then I use my, my doorbell, which if you don't have one of these in your classroom, it's the best thing ever. It's from Amazon. And I ring it. I ring it two times in a row and that tells them to clean up. So they start putting all their toys in there. We come around and we spray it with some Lysol and then we put them away so that they're all cleaned up and then we line up on our little dots and wait for breakfast. So we take our breakfast bag, we go down to breakfast, we eat our breakfast. That part's kind of boring, you know? And then when they come back in, they do the morning meeting. So when they come in, it's kind of like, I'm sure I'm trying to get a picture without showing you all the kids, but it's kind of like the charts where you're like, who came to school, who's at home. It's like that, but it's our like wishing well. So they, every kid has a little circle. There we go, with their cute little picture on it. And they, at, whoa, time to focus, there we go. And they grab their picture and then they add it to our wishing well, which is in other videos. It's just like a heart and purple felt. And they put their picture around the purple felt and that just shows that they're here for the day and then the pictures that are left over are the kids who are not here and we talk about their dur that during our circle time. So they do that and then they stand on the rug, we do good morning song, then we move on, we do our class agreements and we go through all of our rules and they repeat it, then we do the wishing well that I was talking about and we go around we say who came to school today and we just point to each one, one of the kids points around and we sing their song with their name in it. And then we say, who's not here? And we put those kids' faces inside of the heart. I, w I wish I could show you more of this, but it has like all the kids' faces on it and I can't show you that. So anyways, and then we count how many friends are not there and then we sing the wishing well song. We wish you well, we wish you well all through the day. Then we repeat it and then we blow away the hugs for how many kids are absent. And then after we do that, we move on to our calendar, 
very simple calendar. It's not extravagant. It's what's the name of the month. We count for what day comes next. We talk about the days of the week. We do our months of the year song, days of the week song, and it's pretty much it. Sometimes we'll talk about if there's a special event coming up, like there's a birthday, we'll count how many days till the birthday. We'll talk about any days that we're not gonna be in school or if there's any school events, which there's not a lot this year. So very simple calendar because they're not developmentally ready for very much more. So we keep it very simple, very fast. <laughs> I'm talking so much, this is a long video. But then after we do our calendar, then it's time for my social emotional part of circle time. So that could be one of the books about a social emotional skill. Like right now we're working on never giving up and keep trying, kind of like a growth mindset. Um, that can also be, I use these cards, oral language cards sometimes, cause a lot of them need to work on oral language and answering questions. So it's right here from Lakeshore. And it just has a picture on it and like a, a question stem and on the back, it has teacher parts for it. I believe it's from school. Oh, Lakeshore, there we go. And then we will we will ask the questions about the picture and then go around and have a couple kids like use the sentence starter to answer their own question about what whatever the picture is. So sometimes we do that. We also have like a flip chart that we do for social emotional, sometimes like a read aloud that I got on my own, just different types of activities. And then finally, we're done with that circle time. Uh, the routine has gotten a lot faster with that, but in the beginning, we had to break it up with a lot of songs in between because that's a long time for them to sit. So we would, you know, do a little activity and then do a song and then sit back down and do another activity with the circle and then do a song. But now they're, they're ready. They are so ready for kindergarten. Then we move on to learning centers. And this is the part I was going to show you where the cool part about the learning centers, in my opinion, is that there's enough teachers. I mean, when I taught kindergarten and first grade, the hardest part was what do the kids do when they're not working with me, you know? What is everybody else gonna do? But we got that figured out because we have two paras that also have a group and we only have one group who is on the computer, which keeps their attention, while we are in small group. So that's been helpful. But let me show you the chart. Okay, so here is our learning center chart. We have the word work center, which is basically my center. So sometimes we're doing, you know, phonemic awareness, but also like guided reading books, things like that. Whatever I plan to do, that's for that group and it's differentiated. And then we have the writing center, which is a letter book and they're practicing their letter of the week. We are almost done with our letters of the week in our curriculum. So then writing center is going to turn into other types of writing, which I'm pretty excited for technology, computer center, and then we have the alphabet center. So this is still themed, like this week we're doing spring, so they're doing a flower activity matching uppercase to lowercase. In alphabet center in the beginning of the year, we might have done more name activities, so it just, you know, gradually changes. And then I took them down because there's pictures. Again, we use a lot of faces in this classroom, but there's little squares here with the kids on Velcro, and then they just rotate through the activities a week. So we just do one learning center a day, and so that's four day weeks. So if there's a five day week, then we'll do some type of wrap up activity on Friday, whole group instead of a small group. So that's changed a lot in the beginning of the year. I did try to do more independent activities, like the Alphabet Center had a bunch of like choices and the kids would do it like on their own. And then I had a group every time that like I was actually working with, but it just seemed to not be as, um focused, you know, it was, they didn't need playing in the beginning, so that was okay, but they really loved being with the teacher. So now they each have a time every day where they get to work with the teacher and they are still having fun, but we're getting those academic skills in at the same time. It's now the end of the day. I uh, had to stop the video because I was talking too much clearly and ran out of time because the kids had to come back in and then I had to finish my day. So I'm a little more tired now, but I'll try to snip through this schedule. So after we do our learning centers, then it is time to go outside. Sometimes if the learning centers don't take quite as long, I will put up a um, song like Jack Harmon Learning Letter Sounds or the See It, Say It, Sign It for the whole alphabet and we'll kind of do that while the kids go to the bathroom before they have to go outside. Anyway, so then they play outside and when they come back in, we do our snack time and we put a couple other like videos that are specific to the letter of the week during that time. 
And then it is time for our literacy circle. So that's the time where we have been doing most of it on the rug. This week's a little different. They just come sit on the rug. It's like a 20 minute time, including an alphabet craft because the craft is very simple for the capital V on Tuesday, lowercase v on Thursday. Wednesday is cooking, so that kind of messes up our schedule a little bit. And then Monday we do our crown during that time in addition to the stories. And then Friday, we don't do a story, but we do our share and show time instead of like a craft and all that, because that, that does take a lot of time. Okay, and then after that, it's the time that we move on to do our play centers or the math. And this part is the hardest part of the schedule. Some people have commented like, how do you get it all in? This is the part where I uh, struggle with the time management to be able to get to math and get their play time, because they need the play time as well. So for instance, today, since we didn't have nap, we were able to push math back a little bit so they could play before we went to lunch. But typically, you know, we'll do a 20 minute play center and they get to choose their centers in here. So they just go, they pick their play center, they play with their friends, we clean up and then we'll do the math activity. And the math activity is just like the learning centers from the morning. That's the same group that they're already in. So the kids that worked with me, for the learning center, which is like the ABC part of it. They then work with me again for the math. And it's the same thing. I only meet with one group for the week. So it's like one group on Monday and then a different group on Tuesday. And they just like rotate through all the teachers and computer station. So then once we get through math, we go to the rug and we do our singing, dancing, go to lunch, come back from lunch, the poem. So the poem is like a quick, five to 10 minute activity. This is where, you know, they're getting the naps ready, the nap mats ready, and then I'm just doing the phonemic awareness like I talked about before. Friday is a little bit longer, but on Fridays we don't have three-year-olds, so it's, it's okay to get through it. We do our poetry notebook where we glue it in and we make the craft to go with the poem from the week. Okay, and then finally we made it to nap time. It's the best time, right? <laughs> a whole hour where these kids are tired and they are ready to sleep. The, there's only two kids in the class that actually don't sleep and one is my daughter. Of course, that's how it has to work. But anyway, so they nap and that is the time where we get planning done, lesson plans done, certain activities done. And then waking up from nap takes a little bit of time, but like I said earlier, it's their playtime afterwards and that kind of gets them moving, you know, and they just do another 20 minute play center. We clean that up, pack up pretty quick because they're in the routine of getting their binder, getting their lunch box. They do it all themselves. During nap time, we color in their little notebooks to say how their day was or any notes that we need for families. And then we sit on the rug and we have dismissal. So it's a busy day, but there's still some downtime for you know, the kids to be able to play and have fun and learn those social skills as well. Sometimes during their play centers, that's when I get in some extra crafting, like I'll pull them over to do like painting and things like that, just because that's still fun for them and they're not missing out on those social centers with their friends because they still want to do painting. That's really fun. Um, and then other days I just sit with them or we sit with them at kitchen or train table or dollhouse and we talk to them and work on those social skills with their friends. So that's it. Oh my gosh, a whole video of me talking. I hope that helps you. I will link the example of my schedule below. Hopefully the link works. I tried this before and it was kind of a struggle. So I'll do the best I can making it like a Google Drive. And if it doesn't work, maybe I'll just type it in the description. But if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe if you're new here. We'd love to have you and I will see you very soon. I might still do my weekly vlog as well in addition to this. So who knows, but I'm going home now.